so he called up uh, Professor Carla Hogan, Professor Emeritus Carla Hogan at Shoreline, and said, uh, if you need somebody, I've got somebody. Fortunately, it was a time of very high enrollment. They couldn't find people, and so they let me in without me ever having taught a college course before. I've done a lot of corporate training, but not that. And it totally changed what I did. And I loved teaching. I loved being in the classroom. I still think of myself as a faculty member who just happens to sit in the 1,000 building and do <laughs> other things. But it's it's really valuable experience, and you just never know where your next opportunity is going to come. So be open to anything, and, and keep on learning. So there's nothing wrong with going back to get your degree. I'm I'm actually about to start another program. I haven't decided exactly what in, um, in and get a second bachelor's degree uh, from the University of the UK, um, and I'm I'll be 55 in January. So you're never too old. And the third. I would say is give back. Um, the, the work that we do, I mean, it, it's hard sometimes to recognize, and one of the reasons that I love coming to things like this is that the work that we do in the administration and the faculty and all of our staff, and I don't mean to imply any order in the order I said those, um, is really all for the students. It's really all for all of you. And it's, you know, we're not, we're not most of us career building, careers get built, but this is really about a way of giving back to the community. And, and it, it, for me, it feels very generative. I don't have children, but I feel that, you know, some of the students that I've taught and I've seen them grow up and I've seen them go from, you know, age 22, fresh out of the Coast Guard to a really successful executive at a firm uh, in the area. I feel uh, that I'm uh, very proud of that. I didn't do that, but I have. And to the extent that we all touch our students in different um, ways in their lives, um, it, it's a tremendously rewarding experience. Um, you will have difficulties. And I think the, the one thing I will leave you with is in 10 years' time, probably very few people are going to care what your transcript looks like. It's going to be about um, what you've done after you've gotten out of college. My transcript doesn't look very good. I, I, one setback I had is my father died while I was in college. And that's a difficult thing to have to have. And yet, so if you look at the transcript from my junior year, it doesn't look very good. But my senior year looks really good. I think I got all four of or maybe one or three years. So it's, but, you know, I look back and I cringe sometimes. It's like, oh, God. But it, it really hasn't hurt me. And it really has helped me, I think, to empathize with the sorts of things that everybody goes through when they're, when they're trying to get an education. So thank you all very much. Uh, look forward to meeting you and talking with you. I think the number one problem that I see is we have so much information coming to us, and so many people do not know how to navigate that information. And so that right there within itself, I think knowing how to navigate that information is going to help you navigate the world. I think I have some statistics here. Let's see. So, 2017, there was 8.4 billion devices connected to the World Wide Web. By contrast, there's 7.6 billion people living in the world. In two years, 2020, the number of connected devices is projected to increase to 20.4 billion. So, as you know, we are shove information all day long. So the research process and the fundamentals of research allow you to look at yourself and look at your biases. And when you look, when you, when you go through the research process, you have to look at where did I come from? What do I believe? When you step into that paper, you might already notice that I'm already catering, even to this day, I'm, I want to go a certain direction because I'm influenced or because I was raised a certain way. And the research process through the Socratic method and, and questioning, uh, uh, doing question-driven outlines and looking at philosophical um, the basis of assumptions going all the way back to Locke and Ricardo and even going all the way back to the Greek times of, of Socrates. All of that leads to being able to go and simple things like going to a website and looking at the date of the article, who wrote the article, why is it written a certain way, understanding what that rhetoric is. Being able to navigate that is a lifelong um, lesson. 
And that's what I kind of learned, and that's what uh, continues to benefit me outside of not only getting a job, but also going through school. So I don't know if you guys are going to take that process or whatever. I hope you do take that process at the very least. Um, hard work and being part of the honors program is huge. Um, take on as many uh, projects as you can. Uh, that's another thing I wanted to say is, um, yeah, I took all these classes, but everybody just takes classes. It was the extracurricular activities that got me to where I am. All of those fellowships were not part of my classes. Everybody does that. So uh, with that, uh, hard work, um, get into some research, and then don't give up. So thank you. One of the reasons I love honors is that I, I love research. I love all of you doing research. Um, and I love hearing about what you want to do and where you want to go and how you want to use what you study um, to make the world quite frequently a better place. And so, yeah, your dreams are my dreams. I'm done. Just, you know, I, I kind of have broad reaching interests um, because I, I think that we can find the answer to this question of what we owe to each other in all different sorts of places, in the ivory tower, but also in the everyday, in the music that we listen to, in the books that we read, in the movies that we watch. Um, Umberto Eco said that um, who you are is what remains after you've forgotten the books that you've read. And I think that that's really true in lots of different ways. What are we reading? What are we talking about? What are we thinking about? What's the conversation at our Thanksgiving table? You know, what are, what's the music that we listen to when we're going to bed or when we're, you know, on the treadmill at the gym? You know, what, what kind of is occupying our minds, right? And I think in a lot of ways we kind of become what we think about. So what are we thinking about? What is it that sort of pervades its way into our culture, even sometime when it's the supposedly silly entertainment? And Roger Ebert once said, like, look at any movie, a movie that people love, and you'll find that there's something deep about it, that there's something kind of profound. Um, and I found that that's really true. And so I really try to, to put my work into exploring that and trying to find ways to make what can be the, sometimes the really seemingly inaccessible, accessible to everybody. And I think that that's the role of education. And so that's why I became a teacher and why I do what I do now. So, um, so I found a really great opportunity out of Western Washington, which was smaller public university where everything seems to be a lot friendlier for me to be able to navigate and maneuver. I feel like I am a person um, with a big passion and feel not feel existing on the campus to be able to man, uh, navigate. Um, and so I found myself feeling very excited about studying about human services, which I wanted to be a social worker. Um, but uh, having had a couple of internships through the program, I realized that working in higher education was a lot more fun. So I did a lot of service learning um, assistant to ESL classes at Western, and that inspired, that inspired me to um, to do some leadership opportunities in higher ed, and that's how I ended up getting my master's degree in student personnel out of administration higher ed. So that's where I'm at, and I'm at, I'm on my dream job. Uh, although I thought I was going to be a preschool teacher, I'm here, and I'm so happy about it. When you spend like pretty much all day every day with the students that were on our team. Um, they start to really feel like your family, and so I taught in a Title I school where a lot of students didn't have a lot of access to education. Um, I lived in an area where it was like 80% unemployment. Um, and so when I saw my students try to navigate the educational systems around them, like I noticed all these barriers in place that were getting really just not setting them up for success. And so when I started working at a community college over in Bellevue, I really started to notice like, how can I try to remove as many of these barriers as possible? Because I actually started to see like my middle school students from when I taught middle school are now like your ages. And so every person that kind of walks into my office, I kind of see like, you could be my middle school student and I would want someone to be looking out for them, like wherever they end up. So that really is like, I want to remember that because I think it makes a big difference sometimes. So all of middle school, your middle school teachers remember you. But when I was young, I was like with my friends, right? Then we were young, so anything was possible. And now we realize it wasn't. But when it was 
we were like, oh, we should be the first dudes to go on Mars. Unfortunately, someone's beaten us to it, and um, I will have my vengeance for that. <laughs> but we'll be the first dudes to be, we'll be the second ones to Mars. Thank you. <laughs> Um, my physics teacher who encouraged me to go into physics, my orchestra teacher who kept me in high school until I um, moved and then dropped out because I wasn't in his class anymore. <laughs> um, so it was definitely my teachers and the teachers I still have. And, um, yeah. And I just exploded. I like, I loved class. I was doing well for the first time in my life. And I realized that actually caring and putting effort into something, like, I saw success, and that's something I'd never uh, felt before. Uh, so that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm sure. So I hope to um, serve on the Foreign Service with the State Department and uh, explore a career in international affairs and public diplomacy. Um, as I was talking with my table of members earlier, is part of the reason, well, there's a few reasons why I was interested in a career like this, but um, the chief among them all would be the ability to travel extensively throughout the world and um, make an impact on people's lives and policies that impact everyone and um, represent um, you know, a great nation. Something about that, I want to have a bachelor in public health. That's why I'm researching in M Health, which is mobile health. And the teachers here are really inspiring. They, I think I can do really good in my health dream because of what I've seen here, because of the faculty here, and they have inspired me every day to pursue my dream of making impact like Suja in my country, Nepal.